Hello again viewers, and again, I thank you for all your subscriptions, thumbs ups, and comments. I also appreciate the likes on Facebook that you give us. So today, i got this big Hemi in here. I think it's a 2010 Ram 2500. Uh, the guy dropped it off this morning and said he's got a terrible ticking sound when he starts it up. At any rate, I've gone through and the sound was pretty obvious. It was coming from the exhaust manifolds, but these things got some pretty big covers on them and you can't see a whole lot. Uh, I suspect it's uh, got some broken bolts or a broken manifold or something along those lines. So I've taken the tires off the front, I pulled the inner fenders out so I could have a better look and make sure. And the ticking noise is coming from both sides, unfortunately. So we're gonna tear into this a little bit and see what we see. And uh, I don't know what kind of repair video it's gonna be. We're about to find out, I guess. I'll bring you over here and give you an idea of what we're dealing with. So we're gonna end up unhooking the uh, manifold to pipe connection there. Um, they just got a couple nuts and bolts on them. These, uh, uh, what do they call them, pale nuts or you know, encased nuts or whatever they are. Usually get those new. I'll probably just take the torch and nick those off. I've gotta remove this heat shield on both sides so we can get a better look at the manifold, get an idea what's going on. So it's got a nut up here. Oh, what do we got up in the front? Kind of hard to see up in here, but we got another nut right up here in the front. We got this one here. So we're going to take that one out. That one down there on the bottom edge. So, long story short, we're going to take that uh, tin cover off. We're going to take the one off the other side and get a closer look at uh, what we have at hand. Well, both those bolts are broke. That's not good. Well, this is the heat shield that goes over that manifold. We just kind of wedged it up out of there. I took the two nuts off the front of it. But before I did that, I went to take the back two nuts off. And I seen that as soon as I pulled out on that heat shield, it was loose. So I was pretty certain we were gonna find this. Both the rear bolts and that manifold are busted. But, got the heat shield off. Let's go see what's going on on the other side. We'll go from there. So this is the driver's side. I haven't even touched that one yet. You can see, that bolt's probably broke just like the driver, or the passenger side. Which way that comes out of there. Well, here's the passenger, or the driver's side rather. Pretty much a mirror image of the passenger side. So, <laughs> looks like we're gonna turn this into a video of, hopefully, how to extract four broken bolts. Well, I guess really the next step in any of our process here before we go any further is we got to get these manifolds off here. So I'm going to go ahead and heat up the heads of the bolts on these, break any Loctite loops they got on from the factory, and uh, like I say, cut off those manifold to pipe nuts and bolts, and then get these manifolds out of here and see what kind of mess we've got. Oh, that one was loose. 
Nice. Got the manifold out successfully and to do a little fidgeting figure out which way I had to go ends up has to go out the front at any anyway, rate here's what we have and that's kind of what I was afraid of when we first started the job but got two bolts broke off there in the head so I have to figure out a way to deal with those in the meantime I'm gonna go over and work on the passenger side and get that manifold off and see what we have Got the driver's side manifold off as you see me snake it out of there. That one came out the bottom, a little bit easier. And you can see it is deja vu over here. We've got both rear bolts busted off just like we do in the passenger side. So now we have to figure out a method that we want to employ that not only will get out one or two or three, but get out four broken bolts. So here is our final parts pile. We got two manifolds, neither one of them are busted, so that worked out good. Uh, you can see I was able to get out all the rest of the bolts using that method that I showed you there, just heating up the heads of them, just kind of kind of cracks the rust loose, it expands the head away from the manifold, relieves the tension, and we're able to get those out. The manifold to pipe bolts, I did like I said I was going to do, I just reached up in there and took the torch and nicked those off because those are a, a nut and a bolt, there's no sense in fighting with those, we'll just get some new ones. And uh, let's see what else I do. Oh, the uh, heat shields there, I was able to get all the uh, small nuts off of those. I just clamped them in the vise there, heated them up, and got them off. So, oh, and these are the manifold gaskets. So we got all that trash out of there, so let's go ahead and get working on the broken bolts and see if we can get those out. Okay, so I made up my mind 
the bolts, once I heated them up, heated the head up and actually just broke the tension, they actually spun out pretty easy. I was able to get up in there with a quarter inch ratchet and, and get most of the, uh, get most of the bolts out, you know, that I could get to relatively easily. I could have showed you that whole process taking the manifold off, but really there wasn't anything special to it, you know, other than what I showed you here just a, you know, a couple seconds ago. You'd heat the bolt up a little bit, stick a ratchet on it, bust it loose. You know, the second it cooled down, reach up in there, a quarter inch drive, spin it out the rest of the way and go on to the next one. Uh, none of them were real terrible difficult to get to on this uh, particular truck, so uh, I didn't see any need of really trying to, you know, wedge a camera up in there and, you know, waste hours of, <laughs> of time, you know, trying to move stuff around and not catch things on fire. And So, anyhow, uh, the method I'm going to use to get these out is I'm going to use my small, uh, I got a little 110 MIG welder. I'm going to take these 8 millimeter nuts, hold them up on the head with a pair of pliers here. I'm going to fry it on with a welder. These are aluminum heads, so this thing's going to cool rapidly. Hopefully, uh, by doing this, uh, you know, just that heat shock on that bolt will, you know, crack it loose from the aluminum, and uh, having this little nut on there will give us something we can grab a hold of uh, with a wrench, hopefully, <laughs> and uh, back that back out of there. If this doesn't work, then we'll have to go on to some other methods, but uh, as Scotty Kilmer would say, you better pray it works. So, we're going to do a little welding. A little bit of praying and see how it turns out. Well, I don't know how much you can see, maybe my arm was in the way, but uh, this is just seconds after uh, welding it. You can see the thing's almost cool to the touch. The aluminum head just sucks the heat right out of it so fast. So, stick a wrench on here and see what we have. It'll either break right off or it'll come right out. Hopefully, the latter, and it'll come right out. I know Eric the car guy just did a video on manifold studs there on a, I don't know what he was working on. A, Pontiac Transport or Montana or something and I think he had some pretty bad luck at uh, I haven't seen part two yet but rumor was that he got a little hog wild with a drill and wearing it in the water jacket but we'll watch that in another time here so looks like this one is coming out if it was going to break off it would have broke off already so we can go ahead and grab an impact and let's just get the There's one, we're 25% of the way. Let's see if we can uh, keep rolling like this. So I've got one out. I don't know how well this method's gonna work on the next one there. I don't know how well you can see it. Well, that one's actually recessed into the head. Uh, 30 second of an inch or so. It's down in there a little bit. I'm gonna try to get right down in there with the welder and just hit it one time and build that right out and uh, see if we can get that to stick. Wish I had a good way to get a camera angle on this here for you when I weld it, but uh, I don't want to burn up my camera, so I'll try my best. Not real sure how good I got that one. It kind of jumped around on me when I first started. So, man, worst case scenario, bust off. We got to start over. Let's see if we get just as lucky on this one or if we got to... I got a feeling this one ain't going to be very good, but... Yeah, it feels pretty loose. It's going to break right off. Yep. I might have spun that out just a smidge too. That looks like it's uh, sitting up a little higher than it was before. And it's hard to tell. This light is so dang bright on the camera, but it might have came out a little bit. Let me grab another nut and try this again. Yeah, shoot. 
point to try to get them all in one steady shot, but uh, looked like I might have only got half of that one, so kind of tricky to get in here and see that, but looks like that one's cooled down. Yeah, I don't think I got anything on that one. Maybe. I don't know. Yeah, it went one four revolution. It would have broke off by now, so must have hooked it on something. Well, there's two. Two more to go. Now, well, now that we've got those two out, come over here on the driver's side. I'm gonna start with the lower bolt there. That one is broke off flush and is protruding out uh, maybe 10 thousandths of an inch or so. It's just barely sticking out past the block, so I think it's gonna be our easiest one to get to. So let's try our luck over here and see how this works. See how we did with this one here. I try to hold the camera and loosen this at the same time. It feels like it's turning, but they always feel like they're about on the verge of breaking too, so. I'll grab my little cordless impact stick on that. This one might be breaking. I apologize for the shaky video, but it's kind of hard to work one hand. <laughs> well, it looks like number three. Yep, so there's that one. Let's get this last one out of here. I want to go home. Yeah, this one's probably recessed up in more than any of the other ones, so I can't get oriented around here to... Sorry if my hand's in the way, but I think you've seen on the other ones what's going on, so... Try to push it flat. Yeah, let it cool and time will tell. All right, take four. Oh, this don't feel like anything. Well, let me get the impact. Oh, I just dropped it on the floor. Let me. Well, you can see we were able to get all four bolts out, so that's a good thing. I don't know where that last one went flinging to, so I can't show that to you, but uh, at any rate, the proof's in the pudding. It's out. Well, there you go, viewers. The big welder, a couple of nuts, a little bit of patience, and uh, it can save you a whole lot of time drilling or having the potential to drill through a water jacket or drill the bolt hole crooked or you know, any of those scenarios, breaking off a drill bit, breaking off an easy out, any of those things are gonna completely ruin your day. This is a really great method to start with. As you can see, it works pretty well. I do a lot of exhaust manifolds here. Uh, I do a lot of them like on the 6.0 Chevys and the 5.3s and Dodge Dakotas and Hemis and 4.7s and I don't know, they're endless. Uh, at any rate, this is the method I usually employ and 90, 5% of the time it works. So the other 5% of the time you end up going in with you know 90 degree air drill, just you know center punching it, drilling it out, trying an extractor, 
if that doesn't work, we just finish drilling the outdress way and uh, you know put in a helicoil if we have to. But uh, I hope you enjoyed this part of the video. I'm going to end it right here as part one, <laughs> and uh, I'm going to go home for the night. It's getting late. Had a really busy day and trying to get this recorded so I could uh, share this with you. And I will continue it with part two of installing the manifolds here on this Hemi. And uh, so check that out. I just uh, just subscribe to our channel so you make sure that'll come to you automatically. Like us on Facebook. And I guess that's it. So hope you can take away something from this. Thanks.